For step-by-step -step instructions and pictures, visit RAV4Gen5.com. This is the 2020 Toyota RAV4 Adventure. In this video, we're going to install a 4-channel amplifier. This is compatible with all trim levels of the RAV4 that do not have the JBL system. This installation process may also be compatible with other Toyota models that have a similar head unit. This is not the actual 4-channel amp that I'm going to install. I bought this one on Facebook and it turned out bad, so halfway through the install process, we will switch amplifiers. Overall though, I selected a Class D amplifier, which has a small footprint that will allow us to hide it below the instrument panel. It is the top secret location that I will share with you. This is a typical amp wiring kit used to power a variety of amps. What matters is the gauge size of the wire and the fuse. This is the wire harness kit we will use. It is meant for the latest model Camrys, but the head units are very similar to the RAV4 so they should be compatible. The first thing we do is access the wiring behind the head unit so we can confirm that the wire harness that we purchased matches our head unit. We remove the cover behind the head unit that is only held in place by a few clips. Then we remove four bolts that secure the head unit into the instrument panel. Once all of it is removed, we can pull the head unit out. This port here is what connects our head unit to all six speakers. If we follow this wire to the back, we can see that it splits into two, one for the left side and one for the right side. This piece is supposed to connect to our head unit. This other piece is what connects to the wires that go to our speakers. This wire harness kit is convenient to have so that we do not have to cut any factory wires. This basically means we can undo this entire installation if you want to sell your RAV4 in the future. My head unit is made by Denso. You should check yours before you start this installation. If your head unit is different, the installation process still might be the same. Our wire harness is labeled with the speaker location and the positive and negatives of each pin that come from the head unit. I will confirm that it is correct before we do the entire installation process by using a voltmeter to check the conductivity between the head unit and the individual speaker. I do this off camera and I can confirm that the labels on the wires are correct. With that information, we now know the pin layout of our head unit. If we look at the back side of our head unit, the far two left pins are blanks, then we have our rear left speakers, rear right speakers, front left, and then front right. This is the wiring layout of an unmodified RAV4. Each arrow represents a channel that goes to a speaker. The two arrows on top go to dash speakers and the front doors in parallel. The bottom arrows go to the rear doors. Each channel has two wires, a positive and a negative. This is why we have eight wires coming out of our head unit that go to the six speakers. This is what we are going to achieve after we are finished. This is unique here in that the dashboard and the front door speakers are no longer connected. The head unit will power the dashboard speakers and that same signal will go to the amp to power the front doors. If you are going to add a subwoofer like I did in my last video, this is what you want your layout to look like. The subwoofer signal comes from the rear door channels between the head unit and the amplifier. I am not sure if it's a good idea to amplify twice the signal going to the subwoofer since our subwoofer already has a built-in amplifier. This may introduce more noise. This is our head unit connected to the high-level inputs of the amplifier. You can see the amp is different than what I showed earlier in this video. On the other side of the amp is the speaker out signals. Since I have not disconnected the dashboard speakers from the front doors, I only connected the rear door speakers for now to check that things work. These four wires go to the dashboard speakers and the front doors, so they will not be connected. This is our remote turn on wire. High quality amplifiers can usually turn on by the high level inputs coming from the head unit. This amplifier is not one of those. I have temporarily connected power and ground from the battery to our amplifier and then I connected the remote wire to the same 12 volt line of our battery. 
Do not do this in the final installation process, this will drain your battery. We can see the amp does power on, and while you cannot hear the music because of my voiceover recording, it does sound really good. Now we need to disconnect the dashboard speakers from the front doors. We need to first remove this trim from the side. The wires that go to the doors are behind this compartment in the corner of the RAV4 footwells. Then we can unscrew by hand this little thing that holds the trim in place. Then the entire trim can pull off. There is only one clip that holds it in place right now. We unplug this connector and have to cut these two wires. To give us more room to work with, we peel away this tape. And then we can cut these two wires and then connect it back to the socket. These long two wires are what goes through the frame of the vehicle and into the door to our speakers. We will connect the amplifier to these two wires. Here is a top secret location where we will hide the amp, practically right under our feet. There are three clips that hold this cover in place. We can also hide an amplifier under the passenger seat depending on how much clearance you have. This bolt here will be where we ground our amplifier. There is not enough room to hide the amp behind the head unit. Also, it might overheat from being almost under the sun all day. What is also convenient about our amp location is that we can send wires from inside the instrument panel, further making everything hidden. I shine a light where the amp would go and you can see it from the top where the head unit would be. Here is some further proof of wiring being sent down. This is our head unit and this is where the audio comes out. This wire harness connects to our head unit. This set of 8 wires go to the high level inputs of our amplifier by connecting to the wires provided by the amp. It goes into these 8 slots. This is the speaker outside and this is where things get crazy. 4 of the wires go directly to the front door from the amplifier. The other 4 wires need to go back up to the head unit location and connect to the other wire harness to go to the rear speakers. After we pass the wires down the instrument panel, we need to splice them so we can connect it to the amplifier. On the speaker outside of the amplifier, we connect directly to the front door speakers. To power the rear door speakers, we need to send the four wires back up the instrument panel to where our head unit is located. It will reconnect with the other wire harness that will power the dashboard speakers. To power our amplifier, we are going to run the 12 volt wire through the grommet. On our side shooter install video, we ran the wire around the grommet, but this time we're actually going to cut the nipple, which is just large enough to send power wire through. This is what it looks like from the inside of the vehicle. You can barely see it, but the wire is coming through the grommet. There are two nipples to allow you to send wire through. We need to send a 12 volt signal to the blue remote turn on wire. I will use an add a fuse kit and connect to the fuse box inside of our cabin. We need to find a slot that sends 12 volts while the car is on or is in accessory mode. This empty slot actually works for what we need and I use this add a fuse kit to run signal to the amplifier. This is the add a fuse where I tap in for the 12 volt signal. I will also use this 12 volt power line to power the dash cameras. The remote wire is connected to our fuse box. 
This power wire is connected to our amplifier and that bolt over there is where we ground our amplifier. From our last video, this is the subwoofer wire that I connect all the way to our preamp signal coming out of our head unit. If I do a cost summary like I did in my subwoofer video, our new total comes out to around $600. This is about $1,000 less than the JBL system provided by Toyota. Overall, if you want a better sound experience, an amplifier and door speakers can help you get there. If you are going to upgrade your door speakers but not install an amplifier, you will lose some bass. The head unit does not provide enough power to supply new door speakers, but I do think you can get away with a good system by upgrading your dashboard speakers and installing a subwoofer. I felt like it was difficult to explain how to install a 4 channel amplifier using the wire harness in this video, so if you do have any questions, leave a comment below or check out my website for more diagrams that can help explain this installation process even more.